Captain Kate Sinclair, a decorated pilot, and her weapon systems officer, Terry Johnson, are crashed by insurgents in a remote area in an Afghan province. To save herself from her pursuers, she stumbles upon a secret Soviet facility that's been locked up for 30 years. She discovers its hidden horrors and entangles her fellow soldiers in the pursuit of survival. Kate stirs on her bed with a nightmare of missiles hitting her aircraft. She wakes up and drinks a cup of coffee prepared by her mom before kissing her son, Charlie, goodbye as she embarks on another mission. Some time ago, Captain Sinclair was patrolling the skies of an Afghan province with her WSO, Johnson, but guided missiles appeared out of nowhere and hit their planes. The insurgents, headed by Fahid, pursue them. Johnson assists Sinclair as she seems hurt, but the enemies surround them. Therefore, Johnson signals her to stay still while he prepares his gun, but before he can fight back, he's shot down. One of the men approaches Sinclair, so she shoots him and uses his body as a shield while firing at the the others. An enemy charges with a blade, and Johnson shoots the man before passing away. Afterward, the pilot gathers supplies before leaving the area. Meanwhile, the other insurgents arrive at the scene, and Malik, who survives the encounter, helps chase the captain. In no time, they spot Sinclair and snipe at her. Luckily, an insurgent with a rocket launcher accidentally blasts open a sealed bunker. Sinclair squeezes herself in to avoid her enemies. She sees a very deep tunnel and climbs down the ladder. The soldier explores the facility and enters an office where she finds the remains of a man and a microfilm camera. Afterward, the insurgents turn on the lights and are surprised to see huge containers with unknown creatures inside. Sinclair uses this distraction to fight them off. Fires are exchanged, breaking one chamber, which frees the sleeping entity, while the captain crawls into a water drainage to escape. Meanwhile, the alien-like creature awakens and slashes one of the enemies. On the other hand, Sinclair fires Malik's chest with a flare. The captain takes the chance to climb the ladder and and escape, but Fahid grabs her leg. Suddenly, a huge hand rips his face off. Then, a monster emerges and slashes Sinclair's side before she can exit the bunker. She shuts the door and chains it back before running away. But another insurgent, Kabir, points a rifle at her. However, the man doesn't hurt her and flees instead. Therefore, Sinclair resumes running. But due to her injury, she loses her balance and falls. Then, a military car driven by Sergeant Tom Hook hits her. The sergeant commands his team, Corporal Lafayette, to search Sinclair while she identifies her. On the other hand, Private Serrano scans the area, and Private Everett mans the machine gun. Lafayette takes the microfilm camera and her locket. The captain declares they need to leave immediately, but the soldiers don't have a sense of urgency. Then, Hook assists Sinclair and orders everyone to return to the base. At dawn, they arrive at Camp Cooper, where Sinclair insists on seeing the commander in charge. Soon, the captain sees Major Finch, who informs her that the area is where the largest insurgent group is. However, Sinclair points out that the biggest threat is not the insurgents but something inhuman lurking in the area. Unfortunately, Finch doesn't believe her, thinking she's just traumatized. Then, Hook interrupts them to report that Kabir is caught by patrol, but Sinclair tells the Major to let her leave if he won't believe her. Finch ignores her and keeps the microfilm camera before it gets transferred to the intel. Sinclair storms off and Hook volunteers to look for the Soviet bunker, but the Major instantly dismisses him. As the captain regains her composure, she sees Lafayette and confronts her to retrieve her locket. The soldier denies the allegation but Hook commands her to return it. Hook follows Sinclair and comforts her. She comments about the Major's personality. So the sergeant explains that the superior is demoted due to insubordination in one of their missions. Then, he's sent here to lead a group of outcast soldiers. Sinclair asks what Hook's case is, and he confesses to being accountable for the demise of the soldiers in Finch's failed mission. Meanwhile, the Major contacts Colonel Harper to inform about the unusual happenings. On the other hand, Sinclair receives medical treatment from the camp doctor, Corporal Wilkes. The captain stares at Kabir who's detained in the tent and asks him why he doesn't back up her statements. They are interrupted by Hook and Sergeant Jones who praises her combat skills. Sinclair asks Hook what he needs from her and the sergeant probes about the bunker. Sinclair explains that it's hidden and has writings on the doors. She jots down what she remembers and explains she has a photographic memory. Kabir interjects and translates the Russian note which states, do not open. The soldiers are surprised that he's multilingual, but Kabir emphasizes that the reality is much worse than the captain's stories since those creatures aren't humans. Unbeknownst to them, while the sun is setting, the creatures are awakened, breaking their containers and opening the locks in the bunker. When night falls, the soldiers at Camp Cooper commence their evening rounds, with Everett trying to be close to Lafayette. Bromhead and the others share a peaceful evening, but Jones reminds them that they should always be alert. At the same time, the monsters have already escaped, and Major Finch calls Colonel Harper again to point out how credible Sinclair is. He also adds that the microfilm camera is with him, but he should 
know exactly what's happening before he hands it out. Serrano goes to Everett's post to substitute him and advises the younger to take it easy on Lafayette. Everett steps away while Serrano speaks, but the man suddenly turns silent, so he turns around, seeing only pools of blood on the rocks. Simultaneously, Bromhead jokes with his fellow trooper Hughes that he stinks. However, he discovers that the smell comes from another wind direction, and spots a moving creature with a terrifying screech, so he notifies everyone before firing at it. By the time Colonel Harper finishes explaining to Major Finch, the camp is in chaos. Lafayette informs Hook that multiple creatures are coming from north and west. The sergeant rushes to update Major Finch that they're under attack by unidentified creatures. Finch commands them to end anything that shrieks. Simultaneously, a monster jumps in front of Everett and slashes his jaw off. Lafayette shoots the creature in the head, and it falls. At the same time, Hook summons Wilkes to attend to Everett. Before leaving the tent, he informs Sinclair that confiscated weapons are in the trunk and instructs her to watch Kabir. Suddenly, a monster is thrown into Finch's tent, and the two face off while Hook climbs the barricades and sees several creatures coming, so he commands everyone to retreat. However, his men continue to fall as the monsters slash at them. Meanwhile, a monster enters Sinclair's tent while she is opening the trunk for a weapon. The creature strangles her with its tongue, and its eyes become like tentacles about to touch her. Fortunately, Kabir unties himself and opens the trunk, taking a blade and cutting the monster's tongue and eyes. He lacerates it consistently until it's immobile. Then, he gives Sinclair a gun before heading outside. Concurrently, Bromhead calls Hughes to fall back, but the trooper is fixed on firing at the enemies. Suddenly, a monster jumps in front of him and decapitates him. However, the machine gun hits the oil barrels, and an explosion blows off the soldiers and the monsters. A creature is about to charge at Bromhead, so Jones shoots the monster's head. All the soldiers take cover, and Bromhead drags Kabir with him. Hook orders Lafayette to open the armory for their supplies while he and Wilkes rescue the Major. Fortunately, Hook throws a flash bomb into the tent before the Major is completely defeated. Then, Finch takes a baseball bat and hits the monster's head multiple times. On the other hand, Lafayette and the rest of the soldiers arrive at the armory. The female soldier is about to shoot it open, but Bromhead stops her since it can blow up. Then he begins picking the lock. When it finally opens, everyone becomes disappointed to see it almost empty. They all enter the container while covering Hook and Wilkes, who is assisting Finch. Lafayette informs them to aim for the head, and they all shoot at the monster that lunges at the three. Sinclair takes an axe from the armory and jumps onto the monster's back. Then, she strikes its neck repeatedly but gets thrown off. Hook shoots its head, and they all rush inside the armory to seek shelter. Hook declares that they'll wait for the sunrise while Wilkes tends to the unconscious Finch. Outside, the monsters collect the lifeless bodies of the soldiers. Hook probes Kabir to see if he knows something about their enemies, and the man begins telling a local tale. He said that there was a fallen star years ago. They thought it was a sign from God to begin their holy war. So the locals started fighting the Russian forces. His parents taught him how to fight, and by the winter of 1988, the Afghan forces started winning, especially with their Stinger missiles. But mysterious events began as people became missing one by one at night. They found some bodies, which were wrecked. Therefore, Kabir's father led a search team to find the beast, but they never returned. At the same time, the Soviets suddenly retreated, and the mysterious events ended, leaving them with 46 lost villagers. When morning arrives, the soldiers discovered that their comrades' bodies are gone, and the blood trails are towards the west. After a while, Jones and Bromhead retrieve a monster's lifeless body. They look closer at it and find an alien-like creature burning under the sun's rays. Hook commands Wilkes to study and dissect it to learn more about the creature. Upon careful observation, he informs everyone that the monster isn't used to the sun. Bullets won't work due to its tough skin, and their teeth are retractable like a shark's. Then, he takes his tools and cuts the monster's abdomen. Jones commands Bromhead to assist, and Wilkes throws the intestines on his arms. However, he suddenly stops, and with a bewildered expression, he declares that all internal organs are of a human. Major Finch interjects and explains what Colonel Harper shared with him. He informs them that an alien spaceship crashed on Earth in 1979, and the Soviets invaded the country to keep it to themselves. They also found a way to integrate the alien DNA into humans, resulting in the hybrid monster they fought. Sinclair mentions an army of hybrid monsters in the bunker, and since they have nowhere to go in their current location, Major Finch declares that they need to fight. However, he promises to protect his people as much as he can. But before he finishes his speech, the creature stands and strangles Sinclair with its tongue. Then, its eyes attach to her head like it's siphoning her brain. The captain headbutts it, and the group attacks it simultaneously. Major Finch takes a grenade and jumps onto the creature to end it. The next thing they know, innards splatter at them, and the Major bids his goodbye, declaring his voluntary discharge. Kabir steps forward, amazed and bewildered, so Hook approaches and unties him, making him a part of the group with everyone's approval. 
removal. Afterward, they prepare themselves for battle. Sinclair shares that the creature seems to be draining her thoughts, and Kabir interjects that they're learning human ways. With this, Sinclair informs them of their only advantage. She knows their location. Therefore, they decide to attack first. While they prepare very limited ammunition, Kabir sharpens his blade, but Hook informs him that he's free to go. However, the man proclaims he wants to join the fight since he's sworn an oath that he'll avenge his father using this knife. Sinclair confesses that she's lost on what she's fighting for, so Kabir reminds her that she's fighting to return to her family. Soon after, Hook announces their plan, to blow off the entrance and bury the creatures. When they arrive at the bunker, they immediately set up the explosives and exit, but Sinclair drops her locket, so Hook takes it and returns it to her. But then, a creature emerges and drags him below. Sergeant Jones is about to blow the bunker, but Hook radios them to urge them to complete the mission. Sinclair persuades everyone to save Hook, so the soldiers head inside, with Wilkes as a watcher. They tie the elevator to the military car's cable as the medic stands guard. The moment they touch down, Wilkes receives a transmission to evacuate the area in 20 minutes. He informs his team, and the soldiers rush to save Hook. Meanwhile, the sergeant tries to escape while the creature eats the bodies of his comrades from the camp. However, the monster strangles him, so he bites its tongue and stabs it in the head. After ensuring that the beast is lifeless, he retrieves some guns. While the soldiers go deeper into the bunker, Kabir discovers the remains of the locals who were experimented on, and Sinclair finds the captured alien in a huge container. Hook contacts them, and the captain informs him to follow the biohazard signs. However, he's intercepted by a creature. He slides into the lab as his comrades shoot the monster pursuing him. Then, they exclaim their rifles are empty, while Kabir declares he's keeping some for emergencies. On the other hand, Wilkes is attacked by the insurgents, and he uses his machine gun to keep the enemies at bay. Simultaneously, the other monsters are awakened, making them realize that the creatures plan an ambush, making Hook the bait. The sergeant commands everyone to retreat and escape, so Bromhead pushes the emergency alarm to notify Wilkes he needs to pull them up. They get out of the lab and seal the door, but the monsters can turn it open, so Joan stays behind to buy them some time. Sinclair leads them to the exit, but they hear an approaching shriek, so Lafayette stops to face the enemy. When they arrive at the elevator, Bromhead looks for Jones and Lafayette, so Hook explains that the sergeant is buying them some time. But for Lafayette, Kabir is clueless about where she is. Therefore, Hook returns to save her. Meanwhile, Lafayette uses her baseball bat to fight the creature, but it's too strong for her. Luckily, she manages to subdue it by hitting its head with a metal ladle she grabs randomly in the kitchen. However, another monster arrives and ends her. Hook comes seconds later and sees his comrade's lifeless body. On the other hand, Bromhead, Sinclair, and Kabir face several creatures approaching them. The trooper forces the two to ride the elevator and contacts Wilkes to pull them up. Unfortunately, the medic is brawling with an insurgent with a knife on his neck. Concurrently, Hook uses a butcher knife and a massive pot cover as a shield and weapon against the monster. Meanwhile, Jones can't hold the door closed any longer, so he lets go and charges into the lab as he detonates the explosives. Hook hears the blast and jumps into another room for cover. Fortunately, the explosion ends the monster he's facing, but it causes the elevator to be stuck. Wilkes finally beats his enemy and pulls the elevator up, but the car is moving forward instead due to the elevator's condition. He tries to stop it from moving forward to no avail. With 10 minutes left, the creatures fiercely attack Sinclair and her team. Their efforts in fighting them off are futile, and a monster pierces the trooper's head. Simultaneously, Wilkes' attempt to stop the car fails, and it gets dragged on top of the bunker entrance. At the same time, Kabir stabs a monster, and it grabs his arm. He notices that this creature wears the same watch as his father and realizes who it is. Kabir yells at Sinclair to leave before the car drops, creating another explosion. Then, the sergeant gets out of his hiding place and heads towards Sinclair. They hear loud screeches coming towards them, so they hold the elevator cable, and Hook shoots the other to propel them forward. On the other hand, Wilkes is surrounded and beaten by the insurgents with four minutes left for the evacuation. The men take videos of him as they prepare to end his life. Suddenly, the insurgents' heads blow off as Hook and Sinclair shoot them after successfully escaping the bunker. They help Wilkes and they ride the car as the aircraft arrives to release the bomb. The soldiers drive off as fast as they can, but the explosion's impact still reaches them. When everything settles down, the three soldiers step out of the car to see only a mountain of smoke from a distance, covering up the mistakes of history. Meanwhile, spearhead operators arrive at Camp Cooper under Colonel Harper's command to retrieve the microfilm camera, but they don't find it. Unbeknownst to them, Lafayette took it and handed it over to Captain Sinclair. The three remaining soldiers return to the car, but it won't start, so Hook jokes about the other two pushing the vehicle. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.